So here's kind of a very simple image of this. Very, very simple picture of what it looks like. So we can see over here on the left that we have this molten magma. So on how do we go from molten magma to a pluton? What has to happen? It has to cool. So that means one or two things happens. Either the continent moves or the plate moves. So therefore, as it's moving, the magma chamber stays stationary. And so therefore, it loses its heat source. Or the magma chamber itself begins to move. In most cases, it's because of the plate that's moving on top of the magma chamber. In most cases, the magma chamber does not move with the plate. So I want you guys to kind of compare the shapes and sizes of these plutons. So what is a batholith? Notice it's right down here. What does that look like to you guys? What was it before? The magma chamber. The magma chamber. So what would be a good definition for a batholith? Old magma, old magma chamber. Yeah, it's an old magma chamber. It's an old, solidified magma chamber. <coughs> now the stock, notice the stock's up here. In fact, let me zoom in on that. Our stocks are basically old volcanoes. That's not what I wanted. That's not Oh, there we go. All right, so notice we have this old neck of the volcano sticking up out of the ground. That's what a, a stock is. This is a very simple leftover piece of the volcano. So it'd be like our volcano right over here on the left, completely being eroded away. And what we're left with is just this very tip of the pipe that's above the ground. How big are they? Um, you know, they're really small compared to a full volcano. But they can be quite large. Like Bellows Tower is well over 2,000 feet. So, it, from our perspective, quite large. But in terms of geologic features, it's a pain. Not, you know, anything that's really like, wow. So that's what stocks are just, you know, cool down volcanoes. Now, a lacolith, notice right here, it's kind of like a, I like to call it the jelly donut. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about. We talk about the lacolith versus the sill. Think about a window sill. It's nice and flat, and it's kind of what a sill looks like, and it goes between the layers. So you can imagine right here we have our pluton, and it's eating its way between the rock layers, between the bedded layers, and then simply solidifies, just like what we have right here, this will eventually become a sill. So what's the difference in between a sill and a lacolith? What's that? Yeah, the lacolith is kind of a bubble shape, like a disc shape. The sill tends to be flat and tabular. So that's why I like to say it's kind of like a jelly-filled donut. Have you guys ever watched them the way that they make jelly-filled donuts? Yeah. They just simply take this syringe, shove it in the crack of the donut, and it was a jelly. That's basically what we have here. We have this nice little pool of jelly stuck between the layers. Okay, so it's very similar to that. Um, as we already said before, we have the dike that tends to cut across the layers. And so we look over here on the left-hand side, you can see two dikes in the making. They cut through the layers. So that's probably the most important thing I want you guys to make sure you understand is that remember, dikes cut across the layers, sills are parallel to the layers. Okay. Wait, what's up? Lack of? Lack of lift is basically a, um, no. a very small pool. Yep, not a single donut. Lack of. And then collectively, these are all called plutons. Yeah. Okay, so then we can categorize the plutons after that. 
So I told you I gave you some real examples. So this is a picture of Devil's Tower in Wyoming. And basically you can see how it's just straight up. And this is basically what you're able to do is walk right up to this. You're basically sitting inside a volcano at this point. A lot of people like to climb up here. And there's not really a path. You literally have to climb up the side of the volcano. It should be able to Pretty sweet. But like a more of a rough place. Hmm? Like no, no, no. This is basically solidified, not active. Okay, it's the leftover parts of the volcano. Um, Hawaii is always a great place if you want to find evidence of volcanism. Hawaii is probably the best place to go. Um, and then you can see where, right here, the dike is cutting up through the layers. So here's your rock wall. That's cutting up down through the layers. So those are some examples. And then I have some other pictures for you. Yay. I had two pictures that a student took for me on a trip that she went on. And she showed me these pictures. And she's like, I just thought the landscape was pretty. She had no idea what she actually took. You guys see these? Oh, yeah. What are those? Those are stocks. Those are stocks. Yeah, we'll go with that one. All right, so again, it's, um, and then what do we have right here? Uh, dikes. And yeah, those are the dikes. Okay. Um, sometimes you can have them where they literally radiate out from the stock. But in this case, they're just dikes sitting up. So that's one picture. So you can see the whole ridge going right down to here where the magmas came up through the sedimentary rock. Where is that at? This is in, she told me she took it on her way to Arizona, so I'm trying to remember. I would say somewhere probably over New Mexico or Arizona, possibly Utah. Okay, that whole, that area of Arizona, Utah, and, and New Mexico is pretty well developed. Wow. Okay, you're right. It's just a bunch of rocks. Well, what do we have a picture of? It? Um, I, that is. Take a closer look at the just the rocks. <laughs> what do you know? So, what's one of the things that just jumps out to you about the rocks? The white. Rocks. White rocks. There's white rocks that are mixed in with brown rocks. Okay, now that wouldn't normally happen, right? Especially when you can see that layer. Uh, brown rocks going straight across the picture, and all of a sudden we have the same bedding plane right here, and then we also have the white rocks, and then the bedding plane continues. So what does that tell you about this white rock? Yeah, it used to be a volcano. Not used to be a volcano, but it's definitely some type of intrusion. Okay. And based on the shape, what would you say that is? It's a lack of Probably a very small lack of it. It's a dome. And my guess is, based on the profile we have here, I think we're actually looking at where we're seeing it, kind of where it's got the side profile, then cut right down the center, and so that's what we're seeing. So a lot of times it's probably extended out quite a ways out into the road. So what I want you guys to kind of do, and I know you, know, you guys don't really get into geology as much as I do, but it's interesting that you guys are taking your road trips and you drive through these road cuts. Just look out the window and just Take a second or two and look at what you're seeing. I'll take a picture. And think about how that stuff is formed and the geologic processes that go into forming those things. It's kind of interesting to see what you might find. All right, well, that's all I have for those.